So we've worked our way through the evolution in the animal kingdom here, and um, we're going to finish off the protostomes, which you remember, these are organisms where during embryonic development, the first tube that really forms with the coelom um, is going to have the mouth form first. And we've seen some of the different examples that are out there um, when we start looking at some of these kind of interesting animals that we don't necessarily see because they're under our feet. Uh, but the last one we can look at that fits over here with the protostomes is um, the kingdom mollusca. And when you're looking at the members of the kingdom mollusca, we're looking at some animals that have really soft bodies. And this is the predominant phylum of organisms that we're going to find in uh, marine environments. Uh, they do have bilateral symmetry when you look at the overall organization, um, but there are some exceptions when you look at how they get projections coming out, uh, really due to that soft body formation there. Now, if we look at some of the characteristics of uh, members of this phylum here, what we find is all of these uh, animals have this interesting muscular kind of foot that they're going to use for uh, moving around or locomotion. And again, this can come in a variety of different shapes and sizes depending on what you're looking at with the animal. Um, the other kind of interesting feature we see is that they're going to form what's known as a visceral mass, and this contains most of their internal organs inside um, these soft bodies that are there. Um, some of them um, will actually form a sort of protective layer around that visceral mask with the foot there, and this is um, a dorsal mantle, so think about dorsal fins on sharks are going to be on the dorsal side or that top side that we're used to thinking of these guys. And so here on the dorsal side of these bilateral animals, you will find this mantle layer right here. And it's really just a flap of tissue um, that creates this kind of space. Um, and a lot of times you will see that the mantle actually secretes a hard shell. And so our little example of our phylum mollusca here is... Um, a snail. So it does have that nice little shell around the outside to give some protection to that visceral mass with all those internal organs there. Um, another characteristic feature that we find on a lot of the members of Phylum Mollusca is what's known as the radula. And this is kind of like a metal file um, that you would see. It's this little organ that sort of sticks out and it's got these little um, filing projections on it and they use this to basically scrape at things and that's going to break off the food and they can sort of swallow it and it'll be able to travel down that um, digestive tract. But notice here when you look at the snails, um, look at where their food is coming out over here. It's actually coming out um, right next to the gills that they're going to be used using to pull oxygen out of the air and that's going to feed into their um, really really primitive kind of circulatory system there. So overall this is just a um, sort of picture of what you could see for some of the features of members of the phylum mollusca here. And if we look at some more um, specific examples of the members here, this is the second largest phylum of uh, invertebrate animals that are out there. And they found uh, more than 75,000 recognized species. So there's a lot of variety in this phylum. Um, and if you look at the fossil records, you can find an equivalent amount. So you're talking about another 75,000 species of mollusks where we have some fossil evidence that they existed at one time and they've either gone extinct or they have evolved into a new um, type of animal. And if you look at the three groups that I pulled out here, um, the phylum, or I'm sorry, the phylum mollusca contains this gastropoda class. So again, remember, um, domain kingdom phylum class. So we're down at that level right here and looking at different groups within our phylum mollusca. And the gastropods, this thing, gastric, is stomach and poda here. Um, you're looking at leg or feet. So the class designation is literally a stomach foot. And if you look at that um, picture of the snail with all the features, it's basically what they are. They've got that muscular foot on the bottom, that visceral mass inside of there with the stomach inside. And you can see there are terrestrial forms of these, but there are also a huge number of um, sea slugs that are out there. So think about these guys are using that gill to breathe on land. These guys are using that gill to breathe in the water. 
Um, if you look in the bivalve class over here, these organisms are characterized by having a hind shell on them. So they are actually secreting that mantle to make their shell. And you can see these two examples with the scallop and then the muscle right here. And if you look at the inside of the muscle right there, you can really see um, that visceral mass with all of those internal organs there. And probably the most evolutionary advanced ones that we can see out there that have really started um, to develop develop more of a nervous system is in the class cephalopoda and this one literally means like brain foot and when you look at these organisms they do have much larger brains compared to the other classes and um, these guys have some tentacles so they're doing a little bit more in terms of their reaction um, and processing the sensory input that they're collecting. So if you look at all of these, again, they would have those similar features. And a lot of people say, well, octopus doesn't have anything in there. But if you actually open up the tentacles right here, you'll find a little beak um, that looks very similar to what you would find on a parrot. And so this is that secreted mantle portion that the octopus is going to actually be able to use. Um, uses its arms to pull open... Um, something like these bivalves over here and then it can use that beak to basically scrape them up and get them into their digestive system. Um, overall when you look at the octopus these are actually really intelligent animals that are out there um, compared to a lot of these other organisms that we do see. All right so let's move on and we're going to jump back up here we're still looking at the protostome so they form that mouth before they form their anus on their digestive tract. And if we look at this group way up here on the top, this is um, where we're starting to look at some roundworms and some arthropods here. Um, and if we consider the roundworms, they're kind of an interesting organism because they don't have that true coelom right there. And again, when you look at that coelom, this cavity has to be derived um, exclusively from mesoderm tissue. And when you look at these guys, they don't have that full, true mesoderm um, forming this layer right here and suspending their organs. Um, because of this, you get this round shape right here to basically contain the guts of the animals right there. And you can see an example of a free living kind of roundworm here. They really are um, round in shape. Um, the thing with this is you are looking at a magnified image. Uh, when you look at most roundworms um, in the lab, people actually um, pull hairs off their arms in order to pick up the standard roundworm that is used in laboratory experiments. So most of them are going to be microscopic. Some of them are going to be much, much larger and visible to your naked eye. And so if we look at these um, organisms here in this phylum nematoda, you can see they have a very similar kind of body plan to what we saw for these other organisms. You've got this complete digestive, digestive tract that is formed, but these guys are a little bit more cylindrical and they tend to be a little bit tapered on an end there. Uh, if we look at the cuticle or skin layer around the outside, it is actually going to contain um, chitin. So it is uh, a, basically a polymer of a sugar derivative that's out there. And this forms an exoskeleton that helps to provide some support and protection for them. Notice there is no internal skeleton. So they have that external exoskeleton there. And the interesting feature when you look at this is um, roundworms actually have to shed their exoskeleton and then replace it as they grow. So they are kind of similar to what you would see for insects that have to shed that um, shell around the outside. Notice again, they're starting to develop a little bit more of um, some nervous system with a really primitive kind of brain that's known as a head ganglion right here. And then the nerve cards are going to run along the length of their body right here. Um, this head ganglion is really important in terms of biological perspective because now you're starting to get directionality to the organisms that you're looking at. And we saw some of that with that phylum mollusca there. If you have a head and you're getting your food into your mouth and then it travels down through that complete digestive um, tract right here, you're going to be more efficient you're also starting to specialize your digestive system so that you have a one-way flow of these materials going inside of you. And then these animals are basically going to be um, disassembling the food as it moves through that digestive tract and then using those bits and pieces of their food molecules to start building more um, cells. 
Um, overall, when we look in this phylum Nematoda, a lot of these are decomposers, so they're going to help to recycle organic waste. And so you can see a lot of these roundworms would be found down in the soil. So we're not going to see them, but they are definitely there. Uh, a lot of them can also be parasites of both plants and animals. And here you can see an example of some parasitic roundworms uh, that you would find in pork. So this would give you trichinellosis. If you don't cook your pork all the way up, you're going to be ingesting these little juvenile worms that are hanging out inside of the muscles of the pigs. And over here you can actually see a um, dog heart where they have been infected with a parasitic roundworm that is actually living inside of their bloodstream right there.